So our next topic for biology two is topic G, population and pollution. First thing we need to look at is uh, population. Um, we need to know that human population is increasing at an increasing rate. And the term for that is to say that it's showing exponential growth. So it's getting bigger and it's getting bigger at a faster rate. And the reason for this is because at the moment the birth rate uh, greatly exceeds the death rate. So more people are being born than are dying. So we're getting more and more people because there are more and more people alive in order to have children. So it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. For the higher paper, you need to know that the largest rise in population is occurring in Africa and India. But most of the world's resources are currently being used in Europe and America. And the other phrase that you need for the higher is uh, the idea of carbon footprint. And your carbon footprint is a measure of the amount of greenhouse gases given off by the actions of either a person or an organisation over a given time. So a bigger carbon footprint would mean that they released more carbon greenhouse gases, mostly carbon gases really, but greenhouse gases. And a small carbon footprint means that you don't release many greenhouse gases via your actions. So the population increasing is a problem because it increases the demand on our finite resources, so resources that are limited, fossil fuels being a big one. And because we're using more fossil fuels, we're also releasing more pollution because there's more people burning things, we get more sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide reduce, uh, released but we're also releasing more household waste and sewage because there are more people. So as the population increases, so does the amount of po uh, pollution that we release into the environment. So we need to keep an eye on the amount of pollution and there are two ways of doing it. We can either measure directly or we can use indicator species. So we'll talk about both of those in a second. We also need to know about uh, the causes and consequences of global warming and acid rain. So basically global warming, the atmosphere is what keeps us warm and that's the greenhouse effect. Now that in itself isn't a bad thing. The greenhouse effect kind of allows life on this earth to exist because otherwise it would be too cold. So heat from the sun just gets reflected by the atmosphere so it passes through once then it just bounces around inside keeping us warm. However, at the moment, we're releasing too many greenhouse gases, so the effect is getting bigger, more heat's being trapped, and the heat on the Earth is getting too high. So we've got too much energy being reflected, which means that the Earth gets hotter, and that's what global warming is. And um, it causes, it's leading to big changes in climate, which are evident already. And one of the best indicators of this is to have a look at the ice caps, and the polar ice caps are melting which is causing more problems. So the other problem we need to learn know about is acid rain. Now, acid rain is caused by the burning of fossil fuels, which release gases like sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides. They dissolve in rainwater, making the rain acidic, rain falls down and then kills things. So it will kill fish because it makes lakes acidic, it can kill trees, and it also destroys man-made structures as well. So anything that could be eroded by acid also gets damaged. So I said we, there are two ways of measuring the amount of pollution. So direct measurements basically means that we use probes. So we put up an oxygen sensor and we measure how much oxygen there is in a certain place. Or we measure how much carbon monoxide there is in a certain place. Or instead of using probes, we can do chemical reactions. So I could take a, a sample of water, do a chemical reaction, and from that see how much of a specific chemical there is present in the water. The other may, way is to use indirect methods, which use indicator species. So the presence or absence of some organisms can tell us about the levels of pollution. So for instance, mayfly larva only appear when water is clean. Uh, lichen only appears when the air is clean. However, species like the water louse or bloodworm um, exist in really, really polluted water. So if I can count how many of these, spe these specific species there are, it will tell me something about the state of the environment. Those of you doing the higher need to be able to discuss which method is best. So indicator organisms are cheaper, you don't need any equipment, and you can monitor them over a long period of time. So those are the good things about it. Direct methods, however, are more accurate, 
and they give you results at a specific time so I can know exactly what it's like at a different time of day for instance whereas we can't see that with indicator species. Just need to be able to describe the pros and decide which would be the best method depending on what you're looking for. So that's it for pollution and population. If you've got any questions don't hesitate to ask and hopefully this one's pretty easy. Okay and I will see you next class.